Well, there's no doubt that I, I think in the climbing community, the three of you would stu are still considered uh, three of the very best ever. And uh, you did it first. You did it with uh, different equipment. And uh, when, when something has been done, I think a, a route has already been put up. There's a great psychological advantage to the next person who comes along because they know how it went. They don't have to, to uh, uh, figure it out as they go. They know how it went, so that's a, that's a, it seems to me a little bit different. Uh, yeah, it's, and my it, modest climbing it certainly is, is easier to when everything is sort of laid out in front of you. Well, yeah, it's true, but you still got to do all the same climbing. Uh, you, you have more information on the route. But that's, that's all. And uh, I came back in uh, 97 and climbed with my son Ryan and we climbed the nose. And it was 37 years after I'd been on it with Royal and, and uh, those guys. And I realized that El Capitan was just as large and just as scary as it ever was. And uh, then we uh, climbed the uh, Hello, NA you. wall that fall and uh, and I realized that uh, El Cap is no easier than it ever was. It's not easier at all. Uh, it's still the same climb. How long did it take you with your son? Uh, four days. Four days? Yeah. Uh, what, did you camp on the wall or did you? Yeah. yeah. Use the, didn't come down this time. Yeah. That must have been a great. Well, on the nose, we didn't come down. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good experience. Tom, what followed uh, the, how, uh, well, let's go back. How long were you, did you climb in Yosemite? Oh, I, I climbed in the late 50s and early 60s. So 10 years? Yeah, no, no more, less than 10. Less than 10 years. And then what? What did you do in, with, uh, in climbing in your life? Where, where did you go from there? I went and uh, and got busy uh, raising a family. But you did <laughs> continue to climb. I, I didn't climb that much. I went on a few Himalayan expeditions and uh, didn't get back to Yosemite actively climbing for, you know, 35 years. The... the uh, uh, what did you do in the Himalaya? I uh, um, was on an expedition with Hillary mm -hmm. in 63, same year the Americans climbed Everest, uh, building schoolhouses and stuff, and uh, was uh, with the British uh, climbing on the south face of Annapurna in 1970, and uh, then back a, f a few times in more recent years doing smaller stuff. What's your profession? I'm an engineer. And are you, you have your own company? Yeah, the company I've been working with the last 20 years is called Chimera uh -huh. in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, photographic lighting uh, accessories, soft boxes for photographers and filmmakers. So you uh, <laughs> had a little understanding of what I was talking about when you walked in here. Yeah, about light, trying to light for an interview. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a science. I'll tell you. I've worked to, I had the good fortune to work with a lot of great gaffers here. You know, and I just I've been here 38 years, and and uh, to have somebody to come in and do all of that for you and get these beautiful pictures is, uh, is quite a nice. <laughs> I sort of miss that. If I didn't know we were going to be doing this interview, I'd have brought a Shamara light bank with me. Oh, you have one in your room? <laughs> no, I don't have one. Uh, well, I wish I wish that I'd known that too. Uh, but uh, we got it okay here. Um, the the um, uh, you you have now a thirty six year history with uh, the Himalaya in that area. Uh, you were building schoolhouses. Yeah, Hillary was uh, was building schoolhouses and hospitals and stuff, and I was on one of those expeditions. So. What do you think about all this uh, business over at Everest and uh, it's uh, the trashing and 
all of that. Oh, it's always a problem. You know, uh, there's so many of us uh, climbing mountains. You know, uh, the nose ridge get, gets climbed so much that uh, it, it gets trashed out. And uh, it's a serious problem. And, uh, you know, we, we go around um, placing a lot of bolts, too. And uh, we have to, uh, as a community and individuals, learn how to uh, govern ourselves or we're going to lose a lot of our freedoms. With the Park Service and the Forest Service. Period. Every anywhere. Yeah. And uh, or, or we, worldwide. we have to uh, be properly respectful of others and uh, and of the creation, or we we cause a lot of problems. Yeah. That's one of the things we need to be learning as we're going along. How 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 is the uh, trashing of the nose uh, just uh, careless uh, people who whip in there and want to do this and leave their junk there? Most of the uh, problem is the higher you get on the route, and Camp Six is a place that receives a lot of trash, and and uh, it's a, it's a problem that that grows and grows and grows. So uh, we need it, to do a little bit better than we do. Is it? Uh, I think there's a controversy. I'm sorry, I'm not up to date on it, but there there's uh, uh, some. Uh, possibility that they may uh, severely limit it or cut it out. Is that not true? Not that I know of, but uh, there's always that possibility if, if we don't conduct ourselves uh, respectfully. And what do you, do you when you were there in 97, uh, did you stay in Camp 4? Uh, yeah, I did stay in Camp 4. <laughs> things, things uh, uh, pretty pretty much the same, or uh, it's just the, the, yes and no. I mean, the music's different, I guess. There, uh, uh, you know, when we were in Camp Four in the in the fifties and sixties, you know, there was like ten people there, half a dozen climbers or a dozen climbers, and and we could uh, drive our cars in there and camp wherever we wanted to and stay as long as we wanted to, and and now uh, it's an international community. It's uh, way too small for the number of people that want to be there. Well, uh, how many people were there when you were there in 97? What, oh, percent? I think it, it, uh, the capacity is 200 and some, something individuals can stay there. And they were there, huh? Oh, yeah, it's always full. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a problem. Did uh, just uh, uh, if you can... Uh, forgive this question. W did any of the climbers at that time, when you were there with your son, did they recognize you? Oh yeah, yeah. Some, some folks recognized yeah. me. I noticed in my uh, uh, long friendship with Chuck Pratt that wherever uh, we would go, there would always be somebody, somebody almost who would recognize Chuck. Sure. And yet Chuck. Uh, you go back to the climbing books, the main thing you see uh, in those books is Chuck's uh, rear end, you know. Uh, there aren't many pictures of his face. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, a, he's an important figure in the development of climbing in America and worldwide, so he's well known for his accomplishments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, he's had a lot of uh, people go through the Exum Guide School with where he is too over yeah. the years. Um, where are we going with climbing? What's what's left to do? Well, what's left uh, to do is uh, for uh, folks to uh, climb the routes that uh, they want to climb, and uh, what the uh, the uh, the folks that are pushing the standards they're doing is has nothing to do with uh, what the rest of us are doing. And uh, for us to go, uh, say, to Yosemite and climb El Capitan is just as great a thing as uh, when the folks were doing that in the, in the 60s or the 70s. So uh, it's still the same experience, and uh, it can be a good one if, we, if we're prepared and, and, uh, and do a good job with it.